वेलकम वेलकम टू वॉट इज ए कंप्यूटर वॉट इज ए कंप्यूटर यू मैट हैव हर्ड अबाउट कंप्यूटर यू मैट हैव यूज द कंप्यूटर ऑल्सो बट वॉट एग्जैक्टली इज द कंप्यूटर टेक्निकली टेक्निकली वॉट इज ए कंप्यूटर सो कैम्ब्रिज डिक्शनरी डिफाइंस कंप्यूटर एज एन इलेक्ट्रॉनिक मशीन दैट इज यूज फॉर स्टोरिंग ऑर्गेनाइजिंग एंड फाइंडिंग वर्ड्स numbers and pictures for doing the calculation and for controlling other machines so it's an electronic machine what is an electronic machine electronic machine is one which operates on what is called as direct current not alternating current it it operates on direct current it requires basically low voltages usually 5 volts 12 volts etc so it requires less voltage it's an electronic machine and it can be used for storing the information storing the information the information can be in the form of numbers words pictures or it can be video also so you store all these things you can organize all these things into say folders etc depending on your requirement directories etc depending on your requirement and you can also do calculations you can also do calculations and nowadays it can be used to control other machines also other machines also so you can control your electric motor you can control the lathe machine cnc machine maybe you can control the or the heavy equipment which can be used to con uh, which can be used to construct a building also construct a building also so now we are in the era of industry 4.0 industry 4.0 which is about cyber physical systems that means over the internet using computers you can control various physical systems so computer is an electronic machine it requires dc power direct current now how it gets the direct current your electric socket if you observe your electric socket so your electric socket provides only alternating current so to convert it into dc you have what is called as smps or switched mode power supply its basic purpose is to convert ac to dc ac to dc and after conversion this smps provides that dc current to different components of the computer and point to be noted here is different components of a computer require different voltages like 3.3 volts 5 volts and 12 volts etc so different components require different voltages so those voltages are supplied by the smps it takes 230 volts ac and then it splits into different dc components each dc component is given to different component of a computer so computer can be used to store the information and also to do the computations they are the two main advantages of a computer storing and then computing that's why computer is sometimes called as stored program stored program computer stored program computer because we can store the programs and this the program can vary you can uh, load many programs you can replace the programs also depending on your requirement okay so if you take the calculator calculator will have some program which always calculates something so you cannot change the program the program is fixed here the program can be changed the program can be changed so the computer operates on raw data numbers alphabets etc so multiple programs can be stored multiple programs can be executed and you can get different results why only ones and zeros you might have heard that computer uses only ones and zeros or it operates on or it operates using binary number system why only binary number system or why only ones and zeros the main reason is computers are unstable devices unstable devices in the sense that you cannot actually precisely keep the voltage at a fixed value so if you try to supply 5 volts power 
so usually you cannot exactly supply the 5 volts the voltage vary so it, it may be 5.2 volts 5.4 4.9 like that the voltage varies so because the voltage varies you cannot have number of voltage levels number of voltage levels so few voltage levels are possible few voltage levels are possible that's why we have gone with the binary number system so with some voltage representing say high voltage representing 1 low voltage representing 0 so computer works on binary number system not on decimal number system which we generally use 0 to 9 digits transistor transistor is the main component of a computer it's an electronic device which has two states which has two states on and off which has two states on and off on reference 1 off reference 0 and uh, there are number of transistors in a computer in a cpu in a cpu for example if you consider i7 processor i7 processor has approximately 1.8 billion transistors 1.8 billion transistors huge number of transistors this is the block diagram of a computer von neumann architecture this is taken as a reference this is called as block diagram because you are representing the components of a computer using blocks using blocks so that's why it's called as a block diagram of a computer it's a von neumann architecture it's a von neumann who introduced this architecture of a computer and all the modern day computers are based on this one human architecture only so what it contains it contains the cpu this is actually the cpu cpu the cpu mainly consists of control unit and automatic logic unit apart from the cpu we have this main memory this memory this memory can be main memory or primary memory and secondary memory and input output device input output device so this is the block diagram of a computer so this block the based on the block diagram of a computer the major components of a computer can be called as can be identified as central processing unit memory unit input unit output unit it is a central processing unit it is called a central processing unit because computer may have other processors also like math processor graphics processor like that you can have different processors but the main one is the cpu main one is the cpu or main processor is called as central processing unit it is the one which executes the programs math processor is used to basically help help the cpu doing the mathematical calculations and graphic processing unit gpu graphics processing unit is used to handle the graphics handle the graphics the graphics present in images videos etc that will be handled by the graphics processor so the but the main processor is cpu when you reduce the size of the cpu to a simple chip to a chip it is called as it is called as when you reduce the size of the cpu to a simple chip to a simple chip it is called as microprocessor it is called as microprocessor so cpu is the one which executes the programs the main duty of cpu is to execute the programs so inside the cpu we have seen already there are two components control unit and then automatic logic unit control unit is one which controls the operation of a computer which controls the operation of the computer it controls the various devices of a computer it generates clock signal it generates read signal write signal etc indicating the read operation write operation etc we'll go into the details later but control unit is one which controls the operation of a computer and alu is responsible for carrying out the arithmetic and logic operations arithmetic means addition subtraction and logic operations means performing and operation or operation 
and then not operations. What exactly are these operations? We will study later. So input devices transfer the data to the CPU, like keyboard. On the key, on the keyboard, you will have keys. You type the keys. Whatever you type the keys, they will be displayed on your screen. So your keyboard is the input device, and you the keys that you have typed will be displayed on the screen. That screen or monitor that is called as output device. Another example of output device is printer. So memory, memory is where the programs and data is stored. So the memory can be main memory or secondary memory or otherwise called as RAM, random access memory and then permanent memory or hard disk. So RAM and hard disk, temporary memory or permanent memory or main memory and secondary memory main memory secondary main memory is nothing but temporary memory it is also called as ram whereas secondary memory is permanent memory implemented as hard disk so two kinds of memory are there in technical terms you can say you have ram and hard disk ram and hard disk so this is regarding the computer so what you have studied so we have studied the definition of a computer what are the block diagram of a computer or one human architecture? What are the components of a computer? And what is the purpose of each component? So these things we have studied. Thank you.